Okay, so we've got the, uh, the paint removed using the grinder, and now we're gonna take a hand wire brush and kind of finish cleaning up, knock the, dot, the dust and stuff off of this crack. We're using a hand wire brush rather than a wire wheel on a drill. That tends to burnish the surface and we don't get, uh, we don't get as good a bond with the epoxy if I use a wire wheel. So we're using a hand wire brush to kind of clean up once we're done grinding that, that paint off. Okay, using the M260 setting tool with our P375 surface mount port, we're gonna slide the port down onto the setting tool. Notice that the tool is tapered on one end so we could slide the port down on there and, and it'll hold tight. Next, we take our capping material or our gel material and we're just gonna put that right on the edges, the three edges of the injection port. And that's what that should look like when you're done. Okay, now we're placing the uh, port on the concrete, sliding the port down the setting tool till the epoxy oozes out the back of the port. Slowly withdraw the tool. And our port is set. So we keep on doing this until we have all of our ports set. Then we're gonna come back and apply our caps. All right, zoomed in close here so you can see what's, once the port is set, you can see the epoxy has oozed through the, the holes in the backside of that port, and that's what's gonna help get a grip and hold that port in place. Now we're gonna continue placing ports. Uh, we're gonna go probably about eight, six to eight inches apart on this particular wall. I'm gonna mount some more ports and then we'll come back. Okay, so now we're gonna install our cap seal. Our ports are nice and sturdy. The first thing we're gonna do is put our overburden around the base of the port. We want that to be a bit of a dome shape because we're gonna to have to hold the, we're gonna have to support our shutoff valve that we're gonna mount on there when we start our injection. One thing we wanna be careful of is when you're bringing the knife around or your tool around the bottom of the port, make sure you don't leave a pinhole on the bottom. That happens a lot. So that's our overburden on the port. Just a little dome shape. Sometimes it helps to vibrate the material a little bit so you get some good contact. Still using the twin cartridge epoxy setup, and I'm still not using a mixer. I'm mixing on my hawk. I can continue to do that. And I'll show you how to use the static mixer in just a minute. But we want our cap seal to be about an eighth to three sixteenths of an inch thick, and we need to be about an inch wide. Anything beyond that is just wasting material. You don't want to trowel it too thin. If you trowel it too thin, if you're in a situation where there's live loads or expansion and contraction from, from heat, you could end up with a reflective crack all the way through your cap seal and have to redo it again before you can inject. So, don't trowel it thin, leave it about an eighth of an inch, three sixteenths of an inch wide, or uh, uh, thick, and about an inch wide. So we'll go ahead and install the static mixer. This is a fast set material, so I, I didn't use it before because I would have toasted the mixer in a heartbeat. But now I can go ahead and use my mixer and apply the material directly to the crack.
And now I can come back and tool. So that goes a little bit faster that way. Okay, so now we're going to set up for our air test. We want to test the uh, integrity of our cap seal and make sure we have communication from port to port. So to set that up, I'm going to take a P233 shutoff valve have my connectors, P228 connectors mounted in, insert a piece of quarter inch tubing, and then insert my adapter, my quick connect adapter to go to my airline, and that's what I'm going to use to do my air test. All right, so now we're going to do our air test. So we're going to test, uh, using our, our air setup, we're going to test to see if we have continuity from port to port, communication from port to port, and we're also going to check and see if I have any leaks along my cap seal so we can fix those before we start our injection. I'll push the valve onto the port, slowly open the valve. You can hear air coming out the other port. Using the cap then, I'll cap the adjacent port. Keep capping. This one doesn't seem like there's much air coming there. I have air here. And now what I can do, I use a spray bottle. I have to have some Windex, but you can use a uh, a spray bottle with water, some soapy water in it, and I'm going to spray along my cap seal. You can see right here we've got a leak. Actually, it's coming out of a come out of a bug hole in the wall. So we'd have to seal that up. Continue spraying. Okay, so everything looks pretty good. A small leak here, and then this leak here at this bug hole where we want to seal that up. And it looks like I've got a little, little air leaking out onto the cap seal here. So we'll go ahead and fix those before we inject. That way I won't be leaking any material, having uh, epoxy cascading down the wall and making a mess. Plus, That'll help me uh, uh, maintain the pressure so I can push that epoxy further into the wall rather than drink, leaking out. Okay, in a previous video we talked about setting up the tanks, how to attach those to the machine, and attach the air hoses. So now we've attached our Tempest mixer. The A955 Tempest mixer is attached to the outlet ports. Because uh, initially I want to purge this material out and get the air out of the line, I'll go ahead and purge into a waste bucket, turn the machine on, Make sure the pressure is down. Turn the machine on. Slowly bring the pressure up. Open the valve. And let the material flow until you don't see any, uh, any more air pockets or any more air bubbles in the material. Once you're at that point, you can turn, shut that valve off. Now I can go off to my injection ports and start injecting. I'm going to start at this port. Here, not at the bottom, I identified this port as being the widest portion of this crack, and it's going to be easier to fill this crack using the widest portion first, rather than trying to start in the narrower part of the crack. I'm going to make sure my pressure is down, then open my valve, slowly open the valve, then I'll reach over and turn my air pressure up. And I'm about 20 PSI on the gauge right now at a 2 to 1 ratio. That means I'm actually injecting at about 120 PSI fluid pressure. 
I'm going to turn the machine around a little bit. So we can see this pin on the side. This pin on the side, you can see that slowly moving. That's my indication that I'm pushing epoxy out of the machine, through the tubing, and off into my cracks. Now we identified earlier in an air test that I have communication on all these ports. So I should be able to see the material coming out the next port, and I do. I have material here. I'll cap that port, keep injecting. My pin is still moving. I was at 120 PSI, which is about 20 on the gauge. I'm going to increase that to about 30 PSI or so, which is giving me roughly 180 PSI fluid pressure. The machine is still moving. So I know epoxy is going into the crack. And you can see it here, it's come out the bottom. So I'll cap that port. The machine is still running, so I know we're still taking material. Now I'm going to stop. I'm going to hook up the uh, our three-way manifold and show you how to use how to manifold to inject more than one port at a time. Okay, so now I've hooked up our manifold, our A270 is the part number, manifold. I've taken the line from the static mixer, plugged into one part of the manifold, and I made three whips off to three more shutoff valves. I'll attach those to my ports. sure that these ports are taking material, I can shut, a port, shut all the ports off, open one at a time, look at my pin on the side of the machine, that one's taking material, that one's taking material, and that one's taking material. So now I can open all three. My pin is running, my, my pin is moving, so I know I'm taking material. We've already moved up to the next port. Already made it to the top. I should see material off the very top here in just a minute. And there it is. So using the manifold is going to speed up your production quite a bit. Now we're going to pull these valves off. I'll show you a couple of quick tricks for removing these shutoff valves. We use a, Dave, can you grab me a, a connected? We use a fitting on here called a connected. It's a push to connect type fitting. The machine, the, the machine, the connected has a collar, a metal collar on it, and for that to, to release, we need to pull that collar down into the body and then pull the spitting off of the tube or off of our port. Now one way to do that is a setting tool or a, a removal tool that they make specifically for removing these fittings. Slide it onto the tube, pull that collar into the body, and pop the valve off. That's one way to do it. Some guys like to use a hammer, if that's on there really tight, they'll just take a hammer, stick underneath there, same thing, pop it off, okay? Another method, some guys will take and slide a washer on the port first, just so it's a little bit bigger, they can get their fingers on that, 
They'll pull that up against the port and pop it off. All right, that gets your, your valves released from the tubing. Uh, another way to do it is you can take a wrench and slide up underneath there and pull it off as well. So some different ways to pull that valve off of the fort once you get done injecting. In the meantime, we can clean up a little bit, but our ports, are, our crack is fully injected and we're done with this application.